Hello again folks, Skullgun1 for all back for another Transformers review and the first review of 2013. Yeah, I'm pretty much starting the uh, the new year off with a Transformers review, which I haven't done in quite a while, so I apologize if this video might be a little bit um a little bit rusty in places. Not only that as well, but I kind of want to bring the whole um the whole Auto Assembly 2012 haul to its end with what I'm reviewing today, and as well. Um, there's something in that whole which I'm saving for a specific review, which you'll see in the near future, so keep an eye out for that quite soon, I hope. I'm not making any promises, but just keep an eye out for it. Um, but yeah, back for another Transformers review, and today we're going to be taking a look at, as the title will pretty much tell you, Beast Wars Polar Claw. A little bit of a quick history with this figure for me is that I had this figure as, I, I really, really wanted this figure as a child when I first saw it, and... And I got a hold of it, I really liked it, and then when my Transformers phase kind of went a little bit up and down, I sold it, then got it back again in 2012. In 2012. So, um, this figure has had quite a back and forth journey for me, for a lot of different reasons, but nonetheless, I really like it. It's a very nice figure, with a few glaring issues, but other than that, it's, it's an okay figure. But before we can talk a little bit about the toy, let's talk a little bit about the character, Polar Claw. Now, Polar Claw as a character, what can be said about this character is... He is a, a infantry battle commander. Polar Claw's whole role in the Beast Wars is he's an infantry battle commander who, um, when Polar Claw pretty much bellows an order, he expects it to be obeyed with the, with haste and precision, no matter how weird the order might sound or how bad the order might sound. So when pretty much Polar Claw orders an issue, he expects everyone to carry it out, no matter what it is, and he's. He's a war veteran who's pretty much been there, seen it all and all that stuff. A foot soldier with a hunter's instinct, and this is one of those characters that you don't want to fuck around with. So, this character pretty much has a lot going for him in terms of his battle-hardened um, way of warfare. And, as it turns out, um, he, believes in, he believes in a disciplined, principled army of peacekeepers and strives to make sure the maximum military remains as such. And... When it comes to his comrades and subordinates, his sense of fair play is quite legendary. And as well, he is partnered with a robotic bat drone, which is the Bat Scout, which is used for um, mostly surveillance and reconnaissance, tracking a lot of stuff. So Polar Claw pretty much is a war general who has pretty much been there and seen all that stuff. Um, his role in the series, though, he never appeared in the cartoon, which is a shame, because he would have been an interesting character if he had appeared in the cartoon. But his role mostly is in the comics. His role in the comics where he pretty much first appeared is um, in the Beast Wars Reaching the Omega Point comic in the issue Terminus, where during the final battle with Shockerite, um, pretty much several realities converge into a single apocalyptic time storm and all that. And from that, uh, from the alternate realities emerge Cybershark, Baboom, Drillbit, Transkito, Airhammer, and Polarcorn, and many, many others, and were all defeated quite quickly. So, um... He was there, only to be quite quickly defeated. Um, not very much, not, not very good first appearance of this character. His main appearance, though, was in the Ascending, the Gathering and Ascending Beast Wars comics from IDW, where he pretty much was in one of the Stasis pods, jettisoned from the Maximal ship, the Ark, or the, or not the Ark, the Axelon. And not only that, his first victim to witness his awakening from the, from the Stasis pods was the Predacon Spitter, who was pretty much squashed by, um, by what appeared like a giant polar bear, which of course was Polar Claw. And he worked his way towards Rosebeast's summoning signal, and throughout the whole gathering, um, Polar Claw stomped on Terrogator, so he pretty much two, uh, pretty much killed two characters. Well, not kill, but pretty much, um, stunned them, as it were. And in the Ascending, pretty much sometime later, Polar Claw was among the ground forces defending their base, um, when Ravagers Predacons hit the maximal base again. So, Polar Claw's role in the, in that miniseries was very, very brief. He didn't really get a whole lot of development. Um, there wasn't a story which was focused around this character. And, Polar Claw pretty much chaffed at having to watch the battle from the ground, thirsting for his turn at the enemy, which was in the Ascending issue 3, I believe. And, um, during, again, during the battle on Cybertron against Shockerite, Unicron's Acolytes, and all that stuff, hitting, um, but when pretty much when Unicron's Acolytes attacked the Maximals, hitting both Polar Claw and Drill Nuts, it's unknown, it's unknown whether they survived, but we can assume that they survived because, 
Um, the good guys have to survive, otherwise the story wouldn't be good. So really, that's pretty much his whole role in the comics, is that he didn't really get a whole lot to do, which is a shame, because you would think that a battle-hardened infantry commander would have so much to do in terms of um, commanding and pretty much giving the orders out and pretty much just ordering the issues as they stand. But his role in the series was very, very brief, so... Yeah... Um, which is a shame. So really that's pretty much uh, his bio in a nutshell. Polar Claw is an infantry commander with a hunter's, um, hunter's skills, which what's ma which what makes him quite interesting. And, when I say hunter's skills as well, it would have been interesting if about an infantry commander with hunter's skills teamed up with a character like Tigertron, because it would have been interesting to see both hunters work alongside each other, a loner and an infantry commander seeing how pretty much both uh, both characters play off one another would have displayed some interesting chemistry, but then again, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Yeah, so pretty much now that I've talked about the character, let's talk a little bit about the toy, because the toy is an interesting one. He is, Polar Claw is a polar bear. If you look at the name, it's simple. Polar Claw. Polar bear, the claws on the bear, it's... The Beast Wars names are never really that creative, so, um... Give it chance for what it's trying to do, I think. So, nah. yeah, <laughs> I guess. I guess so as far as um, I guess as far as anything's concerned, the characters' names for Beast Wars were not that very good, and I can even I can even admit that they were not good as well. But there you go. So yeah, Polar Claw is a polar a polar bear. He was pretty much part of the very first Beast Wars mega assortment, alongside characters like Scorponok. Um, he, of course, is a mega toy. Polar Claw was a mega toy, and from there, a lot of mega toys started appearing, mostly in the Transmetals line later on, but there you go. And rearing him up is not very much you can say regarding the beast mode. It's a polar bear, what more do you want? Um, detail aside, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but the figure, of course, has some nice fur detail added to it, which is it's quite nice, I guess. There's not really much you can say. Um, the fur detail is very well displayed, and the good thing as well is that this hides the robot mode very, very nicely underneath the um, this part, the, these, the, this pretty much this huge part as well, which of course is the arms, which are going to be shown later on in the video. Um, but the toy is actually very, very nice. It's a nice little toy. Well, it's a nice toy. I don't want to say little because it's a mega figure, but it's a nice toy to look at. And of course, it has a gimmick in beast mode, which is. The back legs, of course, can move back and forth. And when you move the legs, I don't know if this will work or not, but when you move the legs, the bottom jaw will open, revealing his sharp teeth, which are black for some reason. Which are black for some reason. I don't know why um, polar claw's teeth are black. Pol polar bear's teeth are not known for being black. Most teeth are not known for being black, so. Yeah, I don't know why that is. I don't know why the um the designers of this figure couldn't have actually uh couldn't have actually coloured these white, but then again, white on white wouldn't have worked, so there you go. Also not to mention as well, quick mention, um I got this figure as well from Bob Hops to be for everyone. You know who he is, thanks again Bob for giving me this figure or from or letting me buy it from you because I had this figure as a child, sold it, then got it back again, so, yeah, it's a good figure. Um, but yeah, outside of that gimmick, that's really all the beast mode can really do. The, the, back, te the back legs can move back, and the teeth can be revealed. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Not really much I can say regarding the beast mode. It's a simple beast mode, it's a polar bear with nice black teeth. Um, now, on to the transformation, because the transformation for this is actually quite nice. Um, first of all, you want to do is just push the back feet of the polar bear up, and out of the back, you'll see these black parts, which are going to be the robot legs. Just pull them out, and of course, pull the feet out as well, if it will let me. Go on. There we go, right. The legs are out, and of course, get the legs down. But the problem with the legs is they don't stay in place that well because, of course, of the gimmick, it kind of really becomes a problem. And lift up the polar bear arms and, of course, pull out the robot arms up the chest and pull out the ears, the polar bear ears, which, of course, will reveal the head. And, of course, move the, um, open the six pack and, of course, move the head down and there you have polar claws robot head, which... It's quite nice. So here we have oh, 
get the legs down, and of course open the fists. Here we have Polar Claw in his robot mode. Let's look at the head first of all, because the head I think is um, not the best thing about this figure. Because okay, let's look at the head. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but of course he has red eyes. Even though he's a maximal, he has red eyes. I don't care, so that's pretty much what it is. Um, you can't see it, but of course his face is painted a very orange, yellowy color, and his face, of course, has the sort of um, uh, Garing grin, which I don't know. I don't really know why that's there. I don't, I don't think that's really a good thing for this character to have, and. Not only that as well, in the comics, um, this character's face was never really revealed, and instead was revealed a battle mask, which of course, if you rotate the head around, you have the battle mask. Most of the early Beast Wars figures, there you go, most of the early Beast Wars figures were known for having, um, battle masks for some weird reason. I don't know why, but, um, this one I think really works, because it's the only one that actually looks right, and it actually suits the character very well for a battle-hardened war veteran. Um... Infantry commander as such. So, yeah, the battle mask, which is of course red with black eyes, is a nice touch, I think. It's much better than the, than the original head. And of course, articulation wise, the arms and elbows can bend, the arms can rotate the 4360, and they're all on ball joints, that's quite nice. And knees can bend, and the legs can move back and forth. So standing this guy isn't really a problem if you know how to stand him up properly, if the legs will actually work. And of course, an interesting thing as well is that this guy comes with an interesting set of a um, of weapons. If um, if you remember the toy, and if you, if you remember the character, if you remember the toy Scorpionock, um, his gimmick was he had two missiles in his claw, in one claw, and a cyber bee in the other. This guy has a few differences, and of course, I have the Scorpionock figure, so I'll review that at some point. But um, of course, the one interesting thing is that he has an interesting hidden weapon in one of his claws, which, of course, if you look at the side, there's a button right there, which if you pull that button, it reveals this, um, it, of course, reveals a quite nice launching, um, spring-loaded attack claw, which is quite nice, so pretty much when, any, when an enemy is close at hand, this claw pretty much launch out and, of course, attack someone within good distance. So that's... Quite nice, I guess. Nothing that special. It, it does what it does. It's an interesting little gimmick for it to have. And finally, um, like Scorpionock, he had a Cyber Bee. Um, Polar Claw has... Hang on. If you look at the button right at the top, he has... A Cyber Bat. Or a, a pretty much a cybernetic bat, which of course can shoot out and do all the reconnaissance stuff. Um, put the figure down for a second. There we go. Here's the bat hidden in his claw, which is it's quite nice. It's a simple bat with white wings. Um, not much you can see on the bat. It's it's a bat. What more do you want? The detail on this figure isn't the honest little thing isn't that good. But of course, you can have this little guy fitting in to any of Polar Claw's hands. So the bat can pretty much be resting on this guy's hand, which um, doesn't look right because normally a bat would either fit on his shoulder or somewhere else. But, of course, it, um, it does what it does, I suppose, so the bat is a nice little touch, just to rest gently on his hand. And poseability, since this guy was, has a lot of ball joints, all Beast Wars figures have ball joints. Um, <clears throat> oh, hang on. There we go. Poseability for this figure is quite nice. Well, okay-ish. Um, so there, there, there you go, that's pretty much Polar Claw in his um, battle-ready stance, of the many poses you can have him in. So, final thoughts. This isn't... This is a good figure, but it's not great in terms of the few glowing problems in that the regular head is too stupid, and um, he doesn't come with any melee weapons other than other than just what he's got on his shoulders, which is the the, the spring-loaded uh, attack gimmick, and his cyber bat, which doesn't really do very much other than just fly around and do all that sort of stuff, which, of course, the thing doesn't fly, but there you go. Um... But as a figure, it's, it's an okay figure. It's not great, it's not perfect. Most of the early Beast Wars figures were never that good. And as soon as the um, second wave came along, when the Meg and when the the regular line started to fade out, and when the Meg and when the Transmetal line came in, this is pretty much kind of the final hurrah to the regular Beast formers that we had up until the Fusors and Transmetal gimmicks came. The Transmetal gimmicks came along, um, not gimmick. Um, Fusor Transmetals idea came along. So this is pretty much a nice little fig, a nice looking figure. Polar Claw as a character, I wish he did a whole lot more, though. It would have been nice if this character actually had some development, but then there you go. 
Um, maybe one day when Beast Wars gets another uh, rehash, which I don't think that will probably happen in the near future, we might see this character get to do a whole lot more. So there you go, this has been Beast Wars Polycore. Would I recommend this figure? Um, if you like the early Beast Wars figures, yeah, I guess. No, no, pretty much no harm in this figure for getting it for what it is. Yes, anyway, this has been Beast Wars Polar Claw, and I'm Skullgoman Fro. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you all soon. Take care.